In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a multi-cam project inside of DaVinci Resolve focused on content creators. Let's say you have a product in front of you and you want to have multiple camera angles. Maybe you want to have a web page open. You want to comp those together on a timeline. This will be the video for you. I figured I'd shed some light on this. I've been doing it for a few years now and I've picked up some tips and tricks along the way to kind of solve certain problems that you run into for this type of content creation. So let's get to it. Now I'm basically gonna step through the process of making a project and how I set things up. We're gonna say multicam test. And first thing that I do is set up the timeline that I want. This is gonna be a 4K timeline. I also want the frames per second to be 23,976. And the color management, I want it to be managed by DaVinci Resolve. First thing that I do is set up a new media folder. So I go new bin, I just call it media. And this is where we're gonna import all of our footage. Here we go, should be nine files. Two of them are audio files. So I have actually edited this project before and that's why there's proxies that are showing up. The way it was recorded is I have a separate zoom recorder to capture a microphone and a feed from the music production equipment. And then I have the multiple camera angles going in and I'm actually using time code for this. Now, if you're just beginning, you're clearly not gonna be using time code. You might think you could just sync up via the vocal or listening to how people speak. And that's definitely an option, but I recommend just clapping. And I also recommend clapping in a particular rhythm in the beginning. But let me pull up my voice track here. And even though I use time code, I still clap just in case something goes wrong with the time code. Cause you never know, it's nice to have backups. So the preview just showed up and if I roll to the beginning, I basically have this pattern that I instinctively always clap in. It's clap, 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 clap. Now the reason I do multiple claps and in a particular rhythm is so I can easily recognize it and I can clap in different spots for the cameras, but not all the cameras are gonna have my clapping in view when I'm actually moving around. So I like to have multiple claps just in case. Now to sync this up, you want to go to the first clap and you want to press in or I on your keyboard. That'll set the in marker for that particular file. Let me go to a different one. This is right low. This is recorded on a Blackmagic Pocket Camera 4K. If I go to the audio track and let that load up, here we go, this is the audio. It's recorded relatively low, but that's okay because I'm using a different audio track for my voice. Uh, but if you scroll to the beginning, you'll see I have my clapping right here. So clap, 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 clap. The first clap is what I'm syncing to. So I go to the beginning of it, I press I or in, and then I have that ready. Now you do that with each piece of footage or audio that you have that you need to sync up. In this particular instance, I'm using the time code. So what I actually do is for each file that needs the time code recognized off the audio, I right click on it and I say update time code from audio track. And now the time code went from, I think it was zero. Yeah, zero to uh, 719 from when it started. So I'm gonna do that with all the tracks that need the time code. The final thing that I need to do is make sure the files are ready to be put on the timeline. So for instance, this overhead, this needs to be um, rotated because the orientation of the camera was flipped from overhead. So I just go into rotation angle. I flip that around, that's good. Also, some of these need their color. For instance, this front camera is a Sony a7S III. So I go to input color space. I say Sony and it's the Cine S-Log3 that I recorded in. So I click on that and I'm good to go. Let's turn off the proxies. The left cam I believe was a GH5S from Panasonic. So I go Panasonic. Vlog, I'm shooting in log basically whenever I can. The overhead was a Blackmagic uh, camera recorder, so it already has the information in there. Right close was another Sony cam recorded in S log 2. And then right full and right low are both uh, Blackmagic pocket camera 4Ks. So there we go. It's prepared and ready to go into a multicam file. So what I do is I select everything and I go create multicam clip using selected clips. So I click on that and I'm just going to say Media Molt is what I like to call it initially. For me, since it's via timecode, I would go timecode for the angle sync. But for you, if you clapped, you wanna go in points. Every in point that you clapped gets synced up that way. So uh, you can also do out point if you wanted, and you can also do via sound, but I find sound is a bit more uh, unreliable in my experience from the past. I almost always just use the in point from a clap because it's way more reliable. And then for the angle name, I always go file name just because I named all the files what angle they are. And so it'll automatically name them that way. So media mold, we got the right frame rate. We got in point. Uh, for me, it's gonna be time code, angle name, file name. And then I do like to move the source clips to original clips bin when it does this. So I click on that, it's done. Double click on the media mold. And now I can scrub through and see all these files right here. I'm gonna switch to proxies right here. I am on an M1 Max, Mac Studio. And when it's getting like, 
six or more files for a 4K timeline with the multicam setup, I do find the multicam window starts to slow down or slug a bit. And all these are in their original compressed state. I'm not using ProRes or anything like that. It does chug a little bit, as you can see. But if I switch over to proxies, it's perfect has no problems whatsoever. So I still use proxies because I'll use anywhere from six to 10 camera angles that are 4K up to 6K with these projects. Now you might be thinking, we're done, right? And if you just want a basic edit, you could technically just use this and call it, you're good. But I found you run into some problems with this. Like for instance, if you wanna make a vertical short or a TikTok and you wanna stack the frames together and you'd like to do multiple of those and not have to rebuild them every time on the timeline, if you want to nest those cameras together, you have to go a bit further. So let me show you how to do that. First off, we're going to create a new timeline using the media mult file that we just created. So we'll do that. And I'm going to call it angles. Okay. Now just follow along with me because I know you might be thinking angles. Don't we already have angles? Just keep in mind. So if I go to this timeline, you will now see that we have a multicam timeline like so that we can then cut and switch to and all that. And again, if you want to just do that, you're good to go. You can just edit off of this. But taking a step further, here's what I like to do. I like to separate the audio. So I hold Alt or Option or whatever to uh, bring down a separate copy of the audio. And then I hold Alt again and click the original audio. Delete that so it's separated away from the audio files right here. Because what I like to do is say I need the voice track from the Zoom recorder. And I need the music track. So I set those aside and then I start building up the video tracks here. So first up we'll do front camera like so. And then I'll just keep on bringing all these up, making copies and get the different angles initially. Call this front, call this left. So we have all the cameras right here, front, left, overhead, right, close, right, low, right, full. But what we don't have is the computer screen. Now we can just make one of these and say computer, but usually I wanna show a piece of gear along with the computer screen that I'm working with, or maybe show a face cam or something like that. So this is where the angles file is very important because if you open up the original media mult, which is your master multicam timeline essentially, you can't nestle multiple angles from this timeline within itself without having to resync a whole bunch of things. Angles allows you to essentially nestle this stuff and then still have the multicam freedom with it. So let me explain. I'm going to go to the media mult and I'm gonna create a new timeline again. And I'm gonna say screen comp. Now I don't need the audio for this, so I'm just gonna delete the audio. I hold alter option and select the audio. And the first one is the computer screen on there. I guess that works, so we'll keep that. Next up, we're going to bring another angle. So let's say for the sake of a face cam, we're gonna grab the front angle here. Then I'm gonna shrink it and place it where it needs to be for a face cam. So I'm gonna go over here, say transform. Throw the transform on here. Go to inspector, we have open effects. I'm going to go to crop. I'm gonna round this. Uh, actually, that's probably fine like that. We're going to shrink this down now. And actually, I need to center myself a little bit better. So I'll go to the position, center that, go back to the effects. And I will just adjust myself to maybe be like so, maybe shrink it up a bit. You get the idea. You can do whatever you want in these particular situations, depending on whatever file, whatever thing you're presenting that you want to show. Also, on top of this, I can grab another angle from my cameras, let's say overhead. And same thing, I'm going to drop the transform on the overhead. I'm going to round the edges. I'll drop the zoom and I'll bring it over here just for the sake of an example. So now when I go through, you can see everything's all synced up right here. Now to make this usable from a timeline point of view, we have to go back to angles. Our seventh video was our screen. I'm just going to delete that and then I'm going to bring over the screen comp. Now what's nice about this, if you follow this method, anything that you create directly from the media mult will all be synced up correctly as long as you line up all these files to the beginning of the angles timeline. So once again, the media mult is the master timeline for the multicam where everything's synced up correctly. So if you make comps directly from media mult, then all you have to do is line those up in the angles file and everything will be synced up correctly. So I'm gonna call this screen comp. And now in order to edit this as a multicam clip, we go over to angles and we right click and say convert to multicam clip. There we go. Now 
right click on angles since it's a new multicam clip and say create new timeline and i like to call this my main edit but you can call it obviously whatever you want i move that into the master folder so it's uh clean and now i can treat this as a regular multicam session and if at any point i need another angle that is comped differently i can just go over to media mult make a new timeline with it and i can call it something else like we could say three cams stacked like that once again get rid of the audio because we don't need the audio we're using it from somewhere else we can build this now to however we want so let's say the first camera is left i'm gonna make a quick example here so let's say it's left right here we'll put right low as well we'll go front on this one bring it over so you can see me playing and this is a really crude example but what you can see from this is you can quickly build like a vertical stack or whatever format you need or whatever cameras you need to comp together. And then it's all synced up really easily. Cause now I just go over to angles. I say open in timeline and let's shrink this down. And I'm gonna throw the three cam stack right here. I'm gonna bring it over. So it's lined up to the very beginning. And then I'm gonna rename this three cam stack for the sake of this example. Now, if I go back to my main edit and get my multicam, I have the three cam stack there as well. Now, one thing that does happen with DaVinci Resolve is it doesn't always show the comp correctly. Screen comp, it did, it worked correctly. Three cam stack, it didn't. I think it has to do with the fact that I didn't use the transform function from OpenFX. If you use that, it probably shows it correctly, but in this particular case, it's just showing my hands right there. Now, if you have the speed editor, you can now double tap on camera angles as you play through, which is nice. But you don't necessarily need the speed editor to do this stuff. You can actually just go through and you could play and be like, I want this angle now. Be like, great. Then you can cut to the overhead. And let's say you don't like that. You can actually hold command shift and then use the right or left arrow to shuttle through your camera angles. Very convenient. So I can be like, I'm talking for a bit, I'm looking. Now we get the left. Now we get the right full. Be like, I'm talking, talking. More three cam stack because that's how we do it. And then back to the computer. And we're good. Now in this example, I made a crucial error that I should have pointed out in the beginning. And that is these audio files are linked up to this stuff right now. Typically, you want your audio tracks to remain consistent with this stuff unless you specifically have things recorded to the cameras that you need to switch to. And that might be the case, so you'll have to adjust accordingly. But for this example, I actually needed all these to be audio one, and then drag this down, get audio two for the music tracks. And then ideally, I want these angles separated from this so I don't switch the audio every time. As you can see, my edits are still showing the audio from the edits as opposed to audio one, audio two, from what I just changed. So definitely keep that in mind if you are switching angles, but you wanna reference one microphone, separate the audio track so it doesn't switch the audio track uh, angles because now if I go here, you'll see this thing turns track, blue. Uh, Mini Freak, and shows you right here, Mini Freak. So now I have my angles properly switching, but my audio tracks are staying the same as they should. One thing that this helps also is consistent coloring. Cause now if you want to color this, you just go into your media mult and you start coloring these angles. So I'm obviously not going to teach you how to color in this video cause that's way too much for this, but you'd go into each one of these clips, color them correctly, or maybe you have a power grade or something to be able to get them the right color. And then after you do that, once you switch back to your main edit, everything is colored and all the comp angles as well would receive that coloring information which is very, very convenient in my opinion. Cause like, let's say you need to change one angle. Like for instance, this left angle has a blue tint to it. So I would fix that in a color. If you were to do it in a clip by clip fashion, it's gonna become a pain in the ass to keep track of. But if you do it in the media mult, you change that once and it changes for all of your multicam references because the original left would get the color but also any comp that references it would also get the color. So super convenient from a production finishing point of view. Now, another thing I like to do is process the audio and you can do this either in the angles or the media mult. I 
tend to prefer the angles for some reason, but I will often go over to my audio track and then use the voice isolation. We'll click that on and maybe I'll do like 85 or something like that. And then I'll right click on the audio track and cache the audio effect. It will take like five, 10 minutes or something like that, depending on how long your project is. But the reason I do this is the machine doesn't have to keep on processing the, uh, the AI effect of using voice isolation on there. And once it's rendered to a cache, then going back to your main edit references that cache edit on there. Uh, and by the way, that voice isolation is incredible because I play audio and music with my monitors in the studio and it takes out the majority of that sound. So I have a pretty clean mic sound in the studio. Pretty amazing, honestly. Now, if you're curious, here is the final timeline for this particular video that we edited. And uh, yeah, it's all colored up. It's honestly a great way to edit. By the way, if you're enjoying this content, a like and subscribe goes a long way and a comment as well. But if you want to support the channel, you could use our affiliate links to purchase any gear that you're planning on picking up, whether it's cameras, hard drives, computers, anything like that. Well, I think that wraps up this video. Hopefully the information was useful to you. Uh, let me know in the comments if it was, or if you have any other tips and tricks that you like to do. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time for another one. Peace.